dear God, touch this morning, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the music ministry, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the encouraging words of the doctor that was here, Lord. We thank you for the friendly and inviting congregation of New Hope Baptist Church, dear Lord. We thank you for the pastor, dear Lord. Continue to bless him and keep him, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. And back home at unity, dear Lord. Be with them down there this morning, Heavenly Father. And Lord, look at all of our churches, dear Lord. Lord, we pray that somebody gets saved today in the worst way, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you today, dear Lord, in Jesus' magnificent and holy name. And then, Lord, anoint us one more time. Lord, touch these old sinus passages, these throat one more time, dear Lord, to be able to stand and tell the world that Jesus is real. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. These are difficult times. These are strange times. These are times in which we don't know what's going to happen from one moment to the next. In the last three weeks, I have done two infant funerals. One was a complete service. One, Another one was um, they had already... They cremated, cremated the little baby. One died not being able to make it through heart surgery. The other one, we still don't know what happened, but we still have to tell people and stand and encourage people and tell them who Jesus is. Just New Hope has just encouraged you today because these are weird times. These are times where people are waking up in the morning and somebody will say, let's try fentanyl today. And guess what? They didn't make it until the evening. Intelligent, educated people, people that should know better. But I'm here to stand and tell you again, my brothers and my sisters, there's only one way, and that's Jesus. We're going to come this morning from the book of Luke. Luke, uh, let's see, the tenth, ninth chapter, verse 10 through 17. This particular passage of scripture, you'll also find it in Matthew, the 14th chapter. You'll find it in Mark, the sixth chapter. And you'll find it in the book of John, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 14. But today, we're going to take it out of the book of Luke. And here you'll find these words. And the apostle, when they had returned, took him all that they had done. Then he took them and went aside privately into a deserted place belonging to the city of Bethsaida. But when the multitudes knew it, they followed him. And he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. When the day began to wear away, the twelve came and said, send, she said to him, send the multitude away that they may go into the surrounding towns and country and lodge and get provisions, for we are in a deserted place. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said, what we know, we have no more than five loaves and two fish. Unless we go and buy food for all these people, for there are about 5,000 men. Put a pen there. We're coming. We're going to be hitting that point in a little while. Then he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of 50. And they did so. And made them all sit down. And he took the loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed them and broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the multitude. And they ate and were filled. And the 12 baskets of the leftover fragments were taken by, by them. And it happened as it was. He was alone praying, and his disciples joined him and asked him, saying, Who do the crowds say that I am? I'm going to stop right there. 
the subject we're going to use, if we have to give it a subject, and we'll give it a subject, uh, the greatest math problem ever solved. And it was solved by Jesus. The greatest arithmetic problem ever solved. And it was solved by Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. The greatest algebra computation ever solved, and it was solved by the Son of God. It was solved by Jesus, the only begotten Son of God. When we look at this text here this morning, and we look at it, and it, it just screams out with math and numbers and figures all over the text. And uh, a lot of people will say, well, I didn't get that, but, but here it is. The numbers bear out. You had 5,000 men. You had a little child's fish, because it doesn't say it in the Luke text, but in the John text, it points out that it was a little boy's lunch. And it was probably someone who was poor because it was barley loaves and two little fishes. Now, when we look at this, usually there's these pictures of these French rolls that they're dishing out, but it wasn't that kind of a party. You, 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 it was barley, and barley was basically manufactured and put together for horses and mules, donkeys, asses, whatever you want to call them. And so, but it was also palatable for human beings to eat. So, these, some of these people were poor. It may have been a day or so before they got to eat, and they needed something that would stick to their ribs. You know, it's like when my mother, when I was a little boy, she would give us malto meal, and she would give us oatmeal, or she would give us cream of wheat, and she said, something that's going to stick to you. And, and here it is. I may not have wanted that. I may have wanted some bacon and some applesauce and some toast and jelly, but she knew better. And now that I've gotten to be an old man, I see that 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 eating something that's going to stick to your ribs is the thing we need to have. So here it is. They, these barley loaves. These, it's not like it was, I remember back here during the Olympics in Paris, they had people going to these, 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 these bakeries, and they were eating. Uh, one lady was sampling the butter. They had 100 different types of butter, and she was trying to sample them on this big baguette. It wasn't that kind of thing. It was a hard harsh little barley loaf and five fishes. Uh, Dr. John MacArthur says pickle fishes because he, any of the people said were sardines, but there were other types of fishes that uh, they could pickle and, and take from long distance that wouldn't spoil and would you'd be able to eat and digest. So when we look at this, this is a math problem. Now, math has to be uh, something that's logical, something that, that makes sense. But when we look at this problem, when we look at this text, this doesn't make any sense. Oh, but Jesus, I'm, I'm just here to tell you. I'm here today. If you're looking at me through YouTube or through that video and you're going in any other direction, go Jesus's way. I mean, if you hear talking about I'm going to go within the Quran and follow Islam, no, go Jesus' way. If you hear talking about Buddhism and you're going to start reading the Vedas, no, start going. Jesus' way. If you're following Antoine Levon in the Satanic Bible, no, follow Jesus his way. If you're following the Philokalia, no, follow Jesus' way. If you're like, what's that rapper Amber Rose and them that are following the Kabbalah and Madonna? No, if you follow the Kabbalah, you're going to be lost for all eons. If you're going to follow, go the way of Jesus. Find Jesus. Gravitate to Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Jesus that came down through 42 generations, came and lived on this earth, tabernacled on this earth, was born of a virgin. Oh, and he died on that cross, but he was taken off of that cross and put in a borrowed tomb and got up on the third day morning with all power, not some power, but all power. If my little four-year-old member of my, my, my youth department was here, she would tell you he got up with all power in his hands. That's that Jesus. Follow that Jesus. Follow 
that Jesus. Some people are following Parishama Yogananda. And I'm going to tell you, you'll go to hell following that. Follow Jesus. Get with Jesus. Live for Jesus, son of the living God. No matter what, I'm going to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. I almost took off, Pastor, but I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be good. I'm pretending I'm at unity, and I'll take off at unity. Amen. So, so here it is. Ninth chapter, book of Luke. Now, if we go back, coming out of the eighth uh, chapter, we talk about the little girl that had died, and they went and got Jesus. And they said, do not weep. She is not dead, but sleeping. And he told a little girl, called her out of death. Little girl, arise. Then her spirit returned, and she arose immediately. This same Jesus in this eighth chapter, this woman that, had the, that came after him, she uh, had the issue of blood. Here she was for 12 years. She just wanted to touch the, the just touch, the just touch, just touch, just touch. Just touch, touch, touch the hem of his garden. That touch the hem of his garden. I'm sorry. The psychologists can't, they can't help you with that. Sometimes I, I, I've dealt with psychology and then I've worked with them when I worked for the school district. And that's cool. And I'm not knocking anybody. I have a doc, um, I have a, a, a cousin who's Dr. Brenda Wade, who is a practicing psychologist. But there's sometimes you just need to reach out and touch the hem the hem, just touch the hem of his garment. So in the eighth chapter, we see all of that, but then we go into the ninth chapter, and when we pass this miracle, the same one he asked, but Peter, but he says, who do they say that I am? And he said in some versions, and it says, you are the Christ, the Hamashiach, the son of the living God. So we've got that, and then we've got what's happening in the eighth, but then we get into the ninth uh, chapter here, and we see something unique happening in this miracle. Benjamin Pierce said that all mathematics is is the science of drawing conclusions. Here, Jesus solves the problem, but here's the problem. It's illogical, and it doesn't make any sense. If you were to go in here, and if there's any math teachers in here, please beat me up after the sermon. Don't get up and clown me now. (laughs) Beat me up after the sermon. But for all areas of mathematics, with the exception of some algebraic computations and some areas of calculus and trig, they have to end in logic to make it, whether it's counting, whether it's grouping, whether it's putting something together to catalog it, it has to be logical. So we, we start, what's the first thing we learn in kindergarten? One and one is two. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Now, I was a dummy in math. Now, I'm just going to tell you. I, um, uh, I remember my, my dad was really good in math, Pastor Tillman Wade Sr., and he would try to sit there and get his little son to understand it, but I had this mental block. I mean, I, could, I barely passed algebra at City College in 1973. That was 51 years ago. Barely passed it. But I did remember enough about things having to be logical. So we go addition, multiplication, subtraction, division, Then we step over into the various areas known as algebra. Now, that has to have a certain amount of uh, logic there. Then we get a little deeper, and then we go into geometry. And geometry is logical. When we go into trigonometry, that's logical. When we go into the calculus, which is uh, the Mayans uh, talked about coming together in calculus, and contemplating zero, and what, where we then we go into the drawing of decimals. I wasn't that good in decimals. I wasn't that good in fractions. I knew binary numbers, but that 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 could you could 
take that and buy a slow boat ticket to China. But, but here it is. We have a problem here that doesn't make any sense. How many of you today have had problems in your life that did not make any sense, but God still brought you through? Hallelujah. One other point to all this. We serve a supernatural God. Now, I know that's not popular in the modern-day church because now you've got churches that do nothing but try to uh, apply Gurdjieff. Gurdjieff is not going to help you. They try to apply P.D. Ospinsky. That's not going to help you. People are trying to apply Mao Zedong and communism. See me if you, if, I'll explain that even on a deeper level. But here it is. They're doing all these things instead of trying to apply Jesus Instead of getting people to focus to Jesus, because here it is, this little bitty, itty bitty time that we're here on this. We're just, how many of you know, we're only here for a minute, just a, just a minute. The other day, Frankie Beverly died. I remember going to see Frankie Beverly in 1976. That seemed like I was just yesterday, but in actuality, it wasn't. Time is moving that quick. The Bible says, boast not yourself on tomorrow, for tomorrow is not promised to you. This little bit of time, I mean, this little itty bitty, ah, here's a fancy word for you, centrifugal, meaning quick, swift, the swift time that we're here on this earth. We need to follow and find and fall in love with Jesus. The other day at the baby's funeral, and it was very apparent that uh, most of the people there did not know anything about Jesus, if you can believe that. I thank God for how I was raised. I was raised in a pastor's home. I was raised to honor God. I was raised to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I can remember when the Holy Ghost came upon me at Citywide Revival, 1988. I thought I was cute that night. I was going somewhere. And the Holy Ghost, I'm talking about when the Ruach HaKodosh came over me, right? Right there in citywide revival, I began to cry. I was sitting there and I was going, God, I wish you'd hurry up. I got things to do tonight. Oh, but when the Holy Ghost came over me, hallelujah, when that Holy Ghost came and I could feel it like I can feel my hand fanning my face. And the next thing I know, I was sitting next to Sister Inel Howard of the Trinity Baptist Church. And I said, Sister Howard, something's wrong with me. I can't control myself. When the Holy Ghost got a hold of me and I sat there in her book and cried like a little bitty baby at the old St. Paul Baptist Church. My brothers and sisters, no matter what happens, I'm praying that you're being operated under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost tell you what to say. Let the Holy Ghost tell you what to do and you'll be able to take the authority over every situation in your life when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you. Hallelujah. And if you never, I'm sorry if the Holy Ghost have never been a hold of you. I pray that you let the Holy Ghost get control of who and what you are. Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. And when the day began, verse 12, they came and said to him, send the multitude away that they may go to the surrounding towns and country and lodge and get provisions, for we are in a de deserted place here. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we go and buy food for all these people. Now, here it is. That's where the math problem gets very complicated. Now, in John, it talks again about how the little boy, they, they had commandeered his lunch. But what were five loaves, five little barley breads and two fishes amongst all those people? Verse 14 says, for they were about 5,000 men. Now, here's the thing to understand. And I was listening to John MacArthur earlier this year talk about this same text. There were 5,000 men, yes, but there were a whole lot of other people. You had the disciples, his Talmudid. You had the women and the children. Then you had the looky-loos, because everywhere Jesus went, 
You had members of the Pusherim, the Pharisees. You had the Sadducees, the Tulazim. You had the Zealots and the Azines. There were always witnesses there watching everything that Jesus did. And I'm sure they fed him, had compassion because it said he had compassion. So he must have fed them too. So you had all these people. Then the text says, it talks about, um, we have uh, sit the men down and make them sit down in groups of 50 in verse 14. Now this was very Jewish because what it was is they were set in uh, groups. And they were grouping. And you remember, this was men. Now you got to remember this was a male-dominated society, very male-dominated. I, I, I heard a woman say the other day, oh, if I had been there, oh, what I would have did. Baby, you wouldn't have did nothing. <laughs> because these are the same people that could have picked up a stone and said, oh, baby, we got something for you and stone you to death. Oh, hallelujah. These were drastically different times. And I try to get people, when you look at these texts, to look at them and in the 21st century, but at the same time, understand, this was 2,000 years ago. So sit these men down. So they sat the men down in sectors. And so then you had the children and the women, the looky loo So it's conceivable there could have been 10 or 15 or maybe even 20,000 people out there. Now, how in the devil are you going to feed people with five little barley loaves and two little pickle fishes? That makes no sense. It has no logic. There is no, here's another word for you in math. When, when you add something, add something up or come to a conclusion in math, it's called rigor. If I'm saying that wrong, correct me later. Rigor. So how in the world are they going to do this? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, hallelujah today. Verse 15, and they did so and made them all sit down. He took, we're almost through, five loaves and two fishes and looking up, to heaven, he blessed them and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. So what it is, he took the five little loaves, the five little barley biscuits, and the two pickle fishes. And the Bible says, Jesus looked up to heaven and he baruch bless them. Now, 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 when we look at this, some people say, well, I don't get it. How did this happen? Did he do magic? And then I want to put something here. I want to, pastor, if you'll allow me to just go here, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny. If any of you, like, for example, read Barclay, William Barclay. He was a um, theologian who lived, the lion's part of his life was in the 20th century. I actually quoted uh, Barkley, when I was a teenager, when I used to teach the layman at our church, my daddy and a man named Sam Mickens would let me teach the grown men at the church when I was 14 years old. So I taught men who were old enough to be my father and grandfather, some of them were in their 70s and 80s. And I remember Barkley. But as I got older, I looked at Barkley and what he was trying to say, and I had to kind of Pastor Young had to kind of push him away because there is a mindset in the modern day church today to try to uh, take away from the deity of Jesus Christ, the lordship of Jesus Christ, and to take the Bible and push the Bible away and the authority of the Bible and what the Bible is all about. Some people and what Barclay would say, well, this really wasn't a miracle. It was the fact that the people got compassionate because they saw the little boy with his share as five lunch. So this was more, not, a, not a miracle, but it was five people coming together. They had hidden food away, so they took the food out and they shared it. Well, that's heretical if you listen and believe in the Bible. And I believe in the Bible, all 66 books of the Bible, Genesis to the book of Malachi, Matihayu, Math, Matthew to the book of the revelation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So 
I believe in, the, in, in this, 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 this magnificent Bible, so I can't buy what Barclay says. And be careful of people that will try to draw you away from the lordship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be careful of people that will usurp the authority of God's word. Be careful of people who think they know more than God's word. Be careful of people that don't want to follow the word of God, but they say they are Christians. Be careful of those kinds of people. So, 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 so this was a miracle performed by Jesus Christ, son of the living God. So, so, so we have Jesus, and he has sat them down in a group, Pakintania, meaning he sat them in these sets, and he's taken the, 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 the fish and the bread, and he's lifted them up and reached them to heaven, and saying, I can see in my, the old folks used to say, my sanctified imagination. He lifted up the food to heaven, and he baruch ata blessed the food. You don't hear what I'm saying. He blessed Antonai Elohim Arahan. He blessed the food. He blessed it, and then something magnificent happened and occurred at that time. This food, you got to remember, this barley that that original. Five barkley loaves were manufactured here on earth. The two little pickle fish were manufactured here on earth. But when our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, lifted up the, to the heavens and Baruch Atah, that means blessed. How many of you know that no matter what you happen on this earth, we are to bless the name of the Lord. We are to follow the name of who God God is. And the Bible says, then he blessed the food and took the food and blessed it and set it before and gave it to the disciples. All of a sudden out of heaven came thousands and thousands of barkley blows. In came thousands and thousands of little pickle fish. The Bible says that the people ate until they were filled. So they ate and were filled. And the 12 baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up to them and by them. My brothers and sisters, whatever you're going through in this life, turn it over to Jesus. We just had an example of a crazy math problem that was solved by Jesus Christ, son of the living God. I just want to send you, lend you with a couple of uh, formulas before I leave this earth. This same Jesus that said, I am Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and I'm the end. That's one formula. Another formula says that there's only one name given under the heavens by which men shall be saved at the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is King of kings and he's Lord of lords. This same Jesus, they called him the bread of life, Artezo way. The same Jesus that was Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. The same Jesus that's coming back again to this earth written on a white horse and written on his thigh it's going to be Bastion 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 which means he's the king of kings and the lord of lords that same Jesus I'm here to tell you today I've lived through this back in 2011 they had given me up for dead they came, brought me to the hospital and said, told my daughter and my mother he's not going to leave out of this hospital. He's going to die here. I had people from all over the city of Sacramento. Dr. Ephraim Williams was one of the ones that came. A lady named Jonelle Lomax called me and said, I'm going to pray for you and fast for you every day till you get out of this hospital. I had an infection in my body that began to represent it and looked like cancer. They didn't know how they were going to solve it. My mother came that day. The doctor said, Miss Wade, it doesn't look like you're son's going to make it. She says, I'm praying right now to someone named Jesus, and I pray that he's going to make it. My mother stuck her hand back in the room and said, Father, I stretch my hand to 
thee no other help I know if thou withdraw myself from me whether shall I go and I'm here to tell you seven weeks later I walked out of that hospital healed that was back in 2011 and I'm still here today so while I'm here I'm gonna keep on telling the world Jesus died on that cross he was beaten unrecognizable he was pierced in the side he died on that cross he died on that cross was taken off of that cross and put in a borrowed tomb and got up on the third day morning with all power with all power with all power not some power but all power in his hands. Thank God for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you know him today, if you don't know him, I pray find Jesus while you can. If you know him today, I'm going to shout in three seconds. I'm going to shout one, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you done for me. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Just like you fed the 5,000, you're still feeding me today. Thank you, Lord. Are you happy today? Do you know Jesus today? Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Give him some praise today. He's worthy. Oh, he's worthy. Oh, he's worthy. Oh, whoa, whoa. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Rebel. What an amazing word we've just heard. I know my heart has been touched and has been challenged by the word of the living God. If you heard that word and you desire to respond to God in some way, I'd love to be able to help you. We all here at New Hope Church want to walk with you as you make your decisions to draw close to God. Would you contact our church? You can go to our website, and then there you can find all of the contact reach back to us information as we help you to walk in closeness with the living God. Until next time, God bless you, and may God keep you. That certainly is our prayer.